Hey everyone, it's Deja from Crochet Ever After. Today we're going to do the billow cowl. Um, I'm not actually going to make the entire cowl, I'm just going to show you the pattern repeat because it's really simple once you know what to do to go ahead and finish off your cowl. It's going to take um, some bulky weight yarn and an 8mm USL hook. You can download the pattern in the link below and we will get started. Okay, so to start off our cowl, we're going to make a long tail so that way we can sew up the cowl at the very end. So do like 24 inches, that should be good enough to be able to have enough to sew. And then we're going to put a slip knot on our hook, so turn down and reach through, pull that tight. And we're going to start off, you're going to make 63 chains. I'm going to do 18 just to have a smaller section to show you. So um, just do the chains the same way I do, but you're going to make instead 63 instead of 18. So we always yarn over from back to front, turn that hook down to get through our stitches nice and easy, and then push it to our shaft. So we pull and push and pull and push. And you're going to do that for 63 chains. If you know how to foundation single crochet, you can do that instead, and you'll do 62 of those. So you can check out my foundation single crochet video if you are um, wanting to try that out. It's an easy edge, makes it look really nice, and it's um, just a cool little edge. So let me see how many I have. I can either count the V's, so it looks like the letter V stacked on top of each other, or I can do these back loops, whichever is easier for you to count. For me, um, either way is fine. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We have four more. One, two, three, and four. All right. This yarn is twisting on itself a lot. Um, one thing, if you have yarn that twists on itself so you can see that my yarn is doing this, it's good and it's bad. It's horrible to work with because you're constantly fighting the yarn, but it's actually good for your project because what's happening is you're adding kind of a ply to your yarn, so in the end it's not going to pill as bad. So crochet tends to do that to some of these yarns, the most yarns are kind of made for knitting, so when you start crocheting with it, it might twist on itself. So it's a pain, but take heed in knowing that it's twisting it up even more to make it even more plied for when you're working it and you kind of get a little bit tougher yarn out of it. So always good with bad, you know? All right, this yarn is crazy because it is a double color. So my chain is very difficult to make out, especially if you're like a new person. So it takes a little extra when you're working stuff like this, but don't give up. You can do it. Just find where those V's are and you'll see the back side. It looks cool. It looks like a rope almost because of all these different colors, but you can definitely see the difference. This has little dashes, which is our bottom bump, and then the front look like the V's. So I'm just going to go ahead and work into the back loop for my first row. You can do the back loop or you can do the bottom bump. So if you haven't done the bottom bump before, check out my bottom bump video. It creates a really nice edge. So if you want that V, if you like this V and you want it at the bottom of the cowl so it's the edge of it, work into the bottom bump. But for right now, we're going to do the back loop just to give you options. So um, we don't count this loop on my hook. This chain is all wonky. I'm going to fix this chain. It's like twisted. I have twisted chain videos too. If you need that, if your chain looks crazy and you don't know why, check out my twisted chain video and it will tell you why. Um, but we're going to go ahead and skip this first chain. So for row one, we're just single crocheting. So to do that, we skip the first chain and we start working into the second chain. So I just insert my hook in that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, then we're going to work into our next chain. 
do another single crochet in the next one. So as you're working, if you put your work down, you pick it back up, and you're like, where is my next chain? Just kind of look at the stitches you've made. Pull on it. It helps to create like a big hole because then you know that this one's been worked into. So you look for the next one after. Pull your stitches apart sometimes. It makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. So you're going to have 62. So you see all this twisting. You just kind of, I run my fingers along it. So you can see it's a lot more twisted here. Um, but you're going to do 62 single crochets while I finish my 17. And then we will come back and work row two. Last stitch of row one. I almost said round, that's why my row sounded weird. Okay, now we're going to do row two. So to start it off, we're going to chain three. And this chain three is going to count as a double crochet. You can always do a tall chain with a double crochet. If you watch my videos, you know what that is. If you don't, check out my um, eliminating gaps from your turning chain video. This one will work because we're not putting any double crochets next to it. That's why I'm just going with the chain three because we're going to be skipping some stitches to start making some um, like V shape stitches. So I'm skipping the next two stitches and we're technically skipping three stitches because this first one, nothing's happening with it. This chain three is we're it's technically a double crochet, so it means that that would take the place of anything being worked into this first stitch. So in the pattern, it says skip the next two stitches, which will be these two over here. If we turn it sideways, this stitch and this stitch. But we're also not working into this very first stitch because this chain three counts as that first stitch. So make sure that when you're skipping the next two stitches that you're counting this as the stitch belonging to this chain three and then skipping two and then working into that stitch there which is technically the fourth stitch of the row so now we're going to do our little v stitch so it's going to be all in this stitch here two double crochets a chain one and then two more double crochets so we yarn over insert our hook in yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through the first two and pull through the second two this yarn is twisting like crazy so again I do another one then I'm gonna chain one then I'm gonna do another two double crochets all in that same spot I try to like let the the, the twist go in you'll see I have one right here where it's like kind of twisted on itself but once I work into these stitches like it's not gonna be as noticeable um, but I try to work those twist in because that's what's making the yarn stronger. You don't want to just keep like pushing it out and pushing it out, like actually let it kind of work into your stitches. All right, so I got three so far, so you can count those nice and easy. You can see one, two, three. Need one more. Our hole's nice and big, so it fits everything. You can see it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to skip um four stitches which kind of is like the place of these two double crochets and two double crochets on the other side so to do that if you're not used to reading your stitches or knowing what stitch is what you can pull apart and look for nice big holes so that's one stitch two stitch three stitch four stitch and then i work over here or you can look at the tops this yarn is a little bit more difficult to make out, but you can see that V here, and there's two, three, four, and then here's five. So the fifth stitch, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a double crochet, a double crochet, a chain one, and then two more double crochets. So this fan is pulling across. There's nothing in between. It's just pulling it over here to the next stitch. And then we're doing the same thing. Okay, then I skip another four and I'm working here and I'm almost at the end of my row. So you should have three stitches left over after working your last fan. And that's going to be a mirror of the beginning of the row. So you're gonna 
skip two, just like we did at the beginning, and then you're gonna double crochet in this last stitch as your final, final stitch place. So notice I'm only grabbing one loop. I'm not doing that on purpose. I just keep missing the other one. Come here, there we go. All right, now we have our first set of fans. And we're just gonna keep on building on those. It's gonna be a really easy pattern. All right, so now for our next round, it's basically the same thing, except instead of working into single crochets, we're now working into this chain one space. So we're gonna chain three again, and then we're gonna do our fan right in that chain one space. So we just skip everything and go straight to that chain one space. And then we skip everything after that and go to the next um, chain one space. All these twists, and my tail's in there too. Oy, oy. I should have made this tail shorter for my little purposes, but I wanted to show you kind of how much tail to pull out for sewing. You could also, if you wanted to, um, do the long tail at the end. So if you don't like having the long tail in your way when you're making this, you can always wait till the end and fasten off with a really long tail for sewing either way. But we're almost at the end here. So again, we do another fan in the next chain one space. And then, do, 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 do. at the very end, we're going to do a double crochet. And we're doing it in the top of our chain three, because remember we're chaining three at the beginning of the row so we don't want to go into this space and do it because it can make it look a little um, funny along your edge. So instead, you're going to catch a loop at the top of your chain three. So we have one chain, two chain, three chain. And do our double crochet there. And now we have our stacked V's. The whole pattern is like that. It's just going to keep doing the chain three and then the fans in the fans and the double crochet at the end. So I'm just going to do the very last row, which is going to be even easier. It's just single crochet. So I chain one and then I'm going to single crochet in each of the stitches that I come to. And then um, with the chain one, I'm just going to go around the chain one. So this is my chain one right there. So I'm just going to go around it through the big hole and then we keep going. So this cowl, you can, the the yarn that it was made in in the pattern, the Ariosa, which is really soft. It's a lovely yarn. I love it so much. Um, it is a small yardage. So I got 10 rows out of it total. So not 10 shells or 10 of these, just 10 rows total. But if you have a different yarn, like if you're using this yarn that's here, this is the Loops and Threads Facets, um, it has more yardage so you can get more out of it. Um, make sure that you're not going into this big hole, that's not a chain space, that's just the space between the two fans, just a little pointer. Um, if you have more yarn, you can make it even taller. I like tall cows. I like skinny, tall cows that stand up on their own, especially now living on the East Coast when my nose gets so cold when it's cold outside, so I like to have it above my nose. And with this, it's kind of cool because it's got little air holes, so you can breathe a little easier, but you still have enough coverage that it should hopefully keep your nose warm. So if I needed to or wanted to, I can make it taller using a different yarn. Or I could even make this into a scarf. So if you did the 17 chains, if you got the same yarn in 17 chains or match the gauge, this would make a great um, scarf if you just keep on going and building and building and building until you have it as long as you want, you can also make this into a scarf. So lots of different stuff. So again, with the end of the row and you have the chain three, just work into that top chain three for your last single crochet. And then after that, you would fasten off and then you're gonna join it with the mattress stitch. So I have a tutorial for the mattress stitch. It's a very easy join that creates um, an invisible seam pretty much. 
it's gonna butt up so there's no seam poking you in your neck or anything it's very easy to do but that is going to be the billow cowl this is the basic stitch pattern for it and you can customize it in many different ways if you want to make it even bigger so if you wanted to make the circumference of it bigger if you want to make like an infinity scarf out of it you're gonna add stitches um, in multiples of five so just add five to the chain for as long as you want so for example we chain 63 so you would go 68 uh, 73 78 you know just even multiples of 10 would be a little bit easier to count but multiples of five just add five as you go big as you want and you're all set but that's the billow cowl if you have any questions leave them below um, share pictures with me head to my Facebook page crochet ever after and show me your finished objects I would love to see them and thank you for watching